Hello everyone. Let's do a review of Turner Acrylic Gouache today. It's one of my favorite paints and I thought while I'm talking about it, I can do this demonstration of the skull I painted. Now Jerry's Autorama had sent this Turner's kit to me a few years ago. Um, and I guess they liked what I was painting with it. So they also sent me this big, huge set. Ooh. Now I haven't used any of the colors from this set yet, but I have used this little, I guess you could almost call it a travel set several times. And now I've had it for a few years. Um, and it's, it's quite mangled at this point. Came with a ruler that I never used. Came with a few brushes that I have since lost. Um, came with a cloth. Color mixing chart, which is actually quite handy with this limited palette. It helps you come up with some colors that aren't included. And it tells you on the back what colors to use. So I've actually used this a few times. Um, comes with a palette cleaner and all these colors. Now I've done a ton of art with this so far and many of these tubes are quite empty at this point. I'll add some photos of artwork that I've done with these paints in right here. Because this is a gouache paint, it dries very matte with no gloss. So as a result, it photographs perfectly. Everything looks super lifelike and you can capture detail that would be a little bit trickier if you were using a traditional acrylic paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this aside and I'm going to go through this big box of colors and I'm going to choose some of the more light fast colors um, to paint the skull because it is gonna be a gift for somebody and I wanna make sure that it's as light fast as possible. Not all of these colors are light fast. The fluorescents, for example, aren't light fast, but other colors are. So I wanna make sure that I use colors that are light fast. And you can tell by looking at the tube, this one has two stars, so that has a medium light fast rating. And I'll use anything that has two or three stars. This one, for example, has three stars. So I'm going to go through these, pick out the colors that I want, and I'll come back and start painting. So these are the brushes I use when I paint with the acrylic gouache. Um, I did actually find the one that came with the set. It was mixed in with my brushes. It's not my favorite. I actually prefer these brushes. They are Phoenix brand golden Taclon brushes. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same company that makes the Phoenix colored pencils that are so popular right now. But anyway, they're very inexpensive. I buy them at the local job lot. The first color I chose to use is the Prussian Blue. You can find it in the 36 color set from Jerry's. Um, and what's great about these paints, all of them come open stock. And the more popular colors you can actually buy in quite large quantities you can really customize a palette specifically for your needs. I'm using this paint today on Strathmore Mixed Media Toned Paper. I like using the gouache on this particular paper because it doesn't warp. This paper is nice and thick. It handles wet media very well. Um, now you don't use a ton of water with this paint. You don't, you don't need to. In fact, the product recommendations are a two to one paint to water ratio. Um, I think the theory behind that is if you use too much water, it starts to break down the binders and maybe the paint wouldn't be as permanent if you use too much water. Something to keep in mind, make sure you keep your brushes clean while using this paint. It dries very, very fast. And because it's technically an acrylic, once that paint hardens on your brush, it's gonna be really difficult to get off, um, almost impossible. So you wanna make sure that you're constantly keeping your brushes clean and you don't let the paint sit. 
cleaning the paint off of the palette is actually pretty easy. The cleaner that comes with that smaller set um, with a little bit of warm water washes most of the paint right off the palette. So I don't worry about letting the paint build up. As you watch this video, you're going to see my palette getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. Um, and I don't, I don't stress. I know I'll clean it at the end. Because this paint does dry so quickly, if you're using it on a paper surface, keep in mind that it's not going to give you fantastic blends. Um, using it on a gessoed surface where you can maybe spray it down with a little bit of water and keep it movable, keep it more like a, a, a regular acrylic paint, you'd be able to get better blends. So I adjust my expectations and I let the paint dictate what it wants to look like. And it ends up giving me a really nice painterly, freer look. Maybe somebody with more skills than myself would be able to make this paint blend a little bit better and get a hyper realistic look, but I'm pretty satisfied with how this painting came out. I was struggling with the lily, but because this paint is so opaque and because it dries so quickly, you are able to layer and layer and layer this paint over and over again and keep reworking your painting until you're satisfied with how it looks. That's definitely an advantage over watercolor, over traditional gouache, because traditional gouache, you cannot keep painting over other layers. Um, it is so water soluble that they will constantly lift. So if you're a little hesitant about what you're painting or if you like to be able to rework and correct your mistakes, acrylic gouache might be a better option for you than traditional gouache. Because this paint dries so fast, my advice to you would be work in sections. Um, as you can see, the way I've tackled this, I did the background, then I did the sunflower, then I did the lily. And the reason why you're going to want to do this is because your paint is going to dry on the palette really fast. And if you squeeze out enough paint to do the whole painting, you're never going to get to your um, your squeezed paint. You're going to lose some paint and it's going to dry up. One of the great things about this paint is it dries almost exactly how it looks in the palette. So with certain paints, watercolor and acrylic, what you paint wet might dry either lighter or darker on the paper, but this acrylic gouache dries almost exact to what you squeeze out of the tube or what you mix. So if you're mixing a tiny amount of paint, you don't need to worry about not being able to remix it. It's actual, actually going to be quite easy to remix paint if you need to. These are very highly pigmented paints and they mix very well with each other. So as long as you understand color theory, you can create almost any color you could possibly need from the small 12 color set. Now, do I love my 36 color set? Do I love that it has some convenience colors? Absolutely. I used the Prussian blue for the background. I also used the yellow ochre and the burnt umber from the 36 color set. They are all colors that I could have mixed from the 12 color set, especially with that little booklet that comes with the 12 color set. Um, if you don't understand color theory, you're gonna learn a lot by flipping through that little, that little booklet. You can buy both the color mixing book and the palette separately on Jerry's. I think the color mixing book is around seven or eight dollars. Um, the palette I think is around four dollars. I think they're both fantastic buys. Um, you can use the palette for acrylic paint, you can use it for gouache, you can use it for really anything and that color mixing book will work for just about any media, not just the Turner gouache. So um, if you wanted to buy a bigger set and you still wanted that little book, I would highly recommend picking it up. I think it's a fabulous deal. 
When I went on the Jerry's Artorama website to check for current pricing, I did notice they're not currently offering the 12 color set with the palette and the booklet, um, unless it's hidden somewhere on the website and I missed it, but I, I couldn't seem to find that particular combination. The 12 color set that they have right now does contain the same 12 colors that I have. It's currently $27.55. Their prices do fluctuate a little bit, so um, it could go up and down a few dollars. So I would, I would definitely just check it out before you purchase it. The only fugitive color in the 12 color set is the violet. So you're getting a pretty decent set of paint for under $30. If you do choose to pick up one of these sets, I highly encourage you to pick up an extra tube of white. The larger sets do come with multiple tubes of white, but the 12 color set does not. Um, you can never have enough white, especially with gouache and acrylic. One of my favorite things to do is to pick a dark color and a white and create a monochromatic piece with it. It's a great way to practice shading without worrying about um, trying to mix a whole bunch of different colors. It's a great exercise and the pieces you can come up with are pretty beautiful. So right here, once I was finished with or close to finish with this painting, I took a moment, took a step back, took a look at the painting as a whole. Um, I needed to decide if there needed to be any adjustments and um, I wanted a few more darks. I like that some of the darker colors in the set are on the transparent side. Even though you get good coverage with them, um, you can glaze with them if you add a little bit of water. And that's what I did for the skull and for the lily. Um, when I wanted to kind of punch up those darks and create a little bit more dimension, I took the Prussian blue and a touch of black and burnt umber. I added that two to one ratio of, of paint to water, maybe a little bit more on the water side, um, just to be able to glaze in some of those darks and create more of a 3D effect. Let's talk about how I would display an acrylic gouache piece. Um, what I would do is, and what I plan on doing for this piece, is matting it and displaying it under glass. Um, acrylic gouache is not flexible like regular acrylic paint. It will crack, so you want to make sure that your painting doesn't have any movement or flexibility. You want to make sure that it has a solid backing behind it like you would get in a frame. and. And you want it behind glass to protect it from dust. Um, because this is so matte, I can't imagine it would be easy to wipe any dust off of it um, if it started collecting on it. So you do definitely want to make sure that it's protected as much as possible. Even though I did choose colors that are all pretty light fast in this painting, I would not hang it in direct sunlight. I don't think that's good for any artwork regardless of the light fast pigments. I can't think of anything else that I should tell you about this paint. I think I've covered everything. I will be monitoring all the comments. So if there's any questions, if you think of something that I didn't mention, um, please comment down below, ask away, ask your questions. Let me know if you would like me to do a real time tutorial with these paints. It's something I think I'd like to do. And as always, let me know what kind of things you'd like to see on this channel. It's still very new. I'm still really new to this, so I'm not quite sure what everybody wants to see other than unboxings. So far, those have been my most popular videos, but I'd like to do more tutorials and more instructional videos and possibly more reviews of some of the products I've unboxed. So again, yeah, let me know what you think. Give me your critiques. Um, what did you like about this video? What didn't you like about this video? And I hope you stick around and subscribe and I'll see you soon.